Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're going over space weather, a tropical storm, geomagnetic events in the past, one that happened yesterday. And of course, we are starting, as always, with the sun in the last 24 hours on our star, another quiet day. Sunspots developed a bit, plasma filaments remained stable, big dark coronal hole turning through with its solar wind set to arrive today. Next one is incoming, by the way, on the south, bottom left. We have a lot to keep watching for eruptive behavior, but as we mentioned, a coronal hole stream is due today. Phi angle flip we saw starting yesterday is still ongoing. Luckily, only minor geomagnetic preconditioning from it. NOAA forecast level 2 geomagnetic storms when the stream impacts later today would need to be up in the 700 kilometers per second range for that given the current conditions. We're watching that and the sunspots since the group numbers and complexity are both on the rise. New group north of the big lumbering southern one, new spots incoming on the north to the left. Those will all be important to monitor over the coming days even as we're dealing with the coronal hole stream arrival here. Despite the quiet, watch levels are high. Heading next to the South China Sea, tropical system is strengthening and heading for the coastline. It's going to miss the largest cities, but there is a ton of population density and agriculture and fishing infrastructure there. Eyes open on the coast. Our first science story today leads into the second. The definitive stamp on how the sun impacts isotope dating, both via its space weather activity and via the modulation of it by Earth's magnetic field. This is critically important for geologists to nail down, which they haven't fully done yet, and it's why the same event can appear significantly off in time when you find its evidence across the world. Here, the NOAA event, the Tian Qi excursion from 6,000 years ago, shows up a bit more recently when you look to Sweden's evidence. Now, this one is only partially about isotopes and partially about where the magnetic pole actually was moving at the time, was passing over Scandinavia during the primary excursion, meaning that it wasn't until it settled further north and west that they had their drop in intensity. Folks, we now have tons of studies from all over the world showing a magnetic pole shift between 6,500 and 5,000 years ago, but it's all the same event, just misdated here and there, because geologists, again, haven't quite nailed down the isotope stuff even after all these decades. Lastly, folks, a super noctilucent cloud display. This was wild yesterday, and many are speculating it was the SpaceX launch, but Dr. Tony Phillips debunks that very solidly on his site here this morning. The problem is we do need some kind of explanation for the magnitude of the display. Well, the magnetic pole shift allowing more plasma and dust into the atmosphere is the only explanation possible right now. Yes, what happened 6,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, 18,000, 24,000, etc. is happening again now. It's not the end of the world, just the end of the world as we know it. Our documentary on this, which is creeping closer to completion, is sponsored by goldobservers.com. By this point, you should have your awareness of the radiation and climatological and volcanic and tsunami risks that are coming with this event. You should have a ton of your preps in order, leaving only the last gaps to be filled. A lot of us, though, still need to fill the precious metals gap. Goldobservers.com can help. They are already helping us make the best film ever on the topic. They are observers, part of the community, the family. Just be sure you let them know you want it physical, in your hand. Goldobservers.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.